Welcome back for more planning of the Narrowlock Valley Canal Company and Railroad. Without even laying one spike yet on the original plan, I'm actually considering an extension already. But why? Well, hang around and find out. As you may know, space for my N-scale model railroad is extremely limited at only 1.5 metres long and 600 millimetres wide, so careful planning is essential. I've already decided on what's going to go on the main portion of the layout and there's a link to those videos below, but I thought it might be appropriate now to plan for the future, for a change, <laughs> and see what I can incorporate on a slightly narrower extension. So today, I have two options for you to look at, and I'd love you to let me know which one you think might be best for the extension. So let's go. And the first thing we've got to do is match the landforms on the extension to what's happening over on the main layout. That means we've got to allow for the lower level double track and of course the higher mountain which covers the road tunnel. So now we've allowed for both of those we can continue planning the rest of the extension. And the next thing I've got for you to look at is a basic oval of track and how it joins to the existing layout. And <laughs> the really clever ones among you will notice that there's only a single track that attaches to the main layout. Hmm. And I made such a big fuss about having a double track to the extension. Well, after having many, 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 many goes at trying to include two tracks, well, the, the track polarity issues on the return were just overwhelming. So, back to keeping it simple, Stephen. Which explains why there's only a single track now. Besides, I just don't have the space to play with any decent amount of double track mainline anyway. And I think it also explains why it's probably a good idea to plan for the future a little bit, before you actually start on the present, so that you don't make major stuff ups like that would have been. Meanwhile, back to the future, as you can see we've got the basic oval shape there, with a very short siding on the other side at a little station. And at this point in time, all your model trains can do is chuff around in a clockwise direction, which is pretty damn boring. So let's add an upper level. And this is a slightly compressed dog bone so that it fits in with the station, but again provides another continuous oval of track a couple of inches higher. Naturally, there needs to be a link between the two sections, otherwise our clockwise traffic isn't going anywhere. So now we made it up to the upper loop, but the question is, how do we get back down? Well, let's put another link in. And now we can get back to the bottom level. But everything is still going in a clockwise direction. So, that means we need to have some sort of crossover happening so we can switch trains in opposite directions at any time. And that is exactly what those light green tracks now allow you to do. They're shown as light green simply because we need to remember that the polarity is going to need changing in that section as the trains change direction from clockwise to anti-clockwise or vice versa. Now, this isn't really that exciting at the moment. There's only one siding on that upper level, so I suppose we should try and add another one just to get a bit more goods traffic happening, hey? All of this might make a little bit more sense if we throw some roads, cars and buildings in to see what the proposed village could look like. And while I'm still using the scalescenes.com card buildings for this area, I'm not showing any pics of the buildings this time around because I've got the model numbers shown above. 
except of course for the new multi-storey car park which you haven't yet seen. Please remember that I'm wiring this layout for DC operation so the slide above shows roughly where I think all the various sections should be and where all the power joins would be. So make sure you hit the pause button to have a closer look at those and of course the location of a couple of the uncoupling magnets that might go on the layout too. Finally I'll throw some trees in and it really makes a huge difference doesn't it when you, you know, display the vegetation that you expect to find in an area. But anyway, that's the final layout for the first option of the two alternatives I'm showing you today. Essentially, it's more of a scenic build, I suppose, which allows me to take trains off the main layout, bring them over here, turn them around, play with them a little bit over here. It could even be self-contained if you wanted it to be. But as far as railroad operations go, not much happening here. It's more village, trees, scenic roads, that sort of stuff. So let's look at option two now, which does include a little bit more railroading type of stuff. And again, the first thing we have to do is make sure we match the landforms to the adjoining layout. You'll notice that there's a lot more green here, which means uh, a lot more flat space at the lower level, as it turns out. And again, we start off with a lower oval. This one's slightly wider than the earlier version and you can see the joining connection back to the main layout. Now most of the railway activity in this version is actually concentrated on the lower level. So we'll start off with the lower yard and follow that up with a lower return loop. Remember the green track in that section is to reverse the polarity. To give you a better idea of what it looks like, let's throw some buildings into the picture. And one of those that you haven't seen yet is this office block building, go as high as you like. And if you're wondering what all that green space on the right hand side is, well I've got two different options for you to consider putting in here. The first being an engine facility option, which could include a turntable and a roundhouse and a nice long straight track there for all the maintenance equipment and everything else that your engines might need. Or you could have a residential section. I personally kind of like the residential again, but then again, I like all those old buildings. Now it's time to look a bit closely at that brick wall that runs along between the lower and the upper areas. I'm thinking that it should be made with those arches and that means that we can add some workshops or even some shops in the spaces where the arches are. And speaking of upper levels and brick walls, what's going to go up there? Oh, how about another freight yard? And, and it's pink for a reason, which you'll find out shortly. So now it's probably time to show the roads and buildings that are going to be in that upper area. Along with my detailed outline of the power and uncoupling points. So, how did you go with that power diagram? I don't think I'll talk anymore about it. It's really hard to try and explain something like that in um, less than 10 minutes here. So let's have a look at the rolling stock instead. And first up, you'll see that our steam train with a couple of heritage carriages is currently parked on the green return loop at the station, ready to head off and to part in an anti-clockwise direction around the layout once or twice before heading back over to the main layout. 
In the lower freight area, you can see that there's a few blue wagons there that need a bit of shunting from that loco that's right up the top. There is a head shunt at the top of both of those tracks which allows the locomotive to come in head first, drop its load on either of the outside tracks and then head up back up the middle track. So that's something that would be interesting for you to model and operate. Similarly, all those pink tracks in the upper freight section can also be used for normal freight. But they do have another purpose. Have you got any idea what it is? Maybe some of you have seen this before, and I'll throw the words 533 at you for a clue. But no, look, I won't uh, make you hold on any longer. This is the classic 533 Inglenook puzzle. And in this puzzle you've got sidings that can take five or three or three freight wagons maximum and the head shunt is a maximum of three freight wagons plus the locomotive. So the idea is you start out with eight wagons randomly placed somewhere on the sidings. You then draw five random carriages out of a bucket and the idea of the puzzle is that you then have to extract those carriages in order to form a complete train to head off down the track. And the reason the track's pink, well, that's because you've got to stay in the pink in order to complete the puzzle. There's no going into that grey section. So that's something that can add a bit more fun and complexity if you like with over 4,000 possible combinations. It should keep you busy for years. <laughs> but anyway, definitely something that you should consider including on your layout no matter where it is. Okay, we'll bring the trees back and I'll give you a final look at what the layout could look like with the engine facility. Or this is what it could look like with a residential area. Or for a quick reminder, here was the first option that I presented five minutes ago. So that's three options to choose from. Tell me what your favourite is by leaving a comment below. I'd really love to hear from you. Cheers for now. Bye.